President Trump again making it a point of attacking prominent black Americans. He's just impugned the intelligence of LeBron James and Don Lemon, which echoes the way he singled out the IQ of Congresswoman Maxine Waters or the academic credentials of Barack Obama, attacks that come on the anniversary of the Charlottesville white power rallies that Trump partially defended. Now, tonight we have a special conversation with two political analysts with some opposing views on Trump's approach to race, a celebrated progressive academic and a conservative activist who's been hailed by the president himself. Donald Trump's views and rhetoric on race, we should note, are not original. The Manhattan media mogul is known more for echoing other cultural warriors than writing his own lines. It goes well beyond the Reagan slogan, make America great again. We should note Trump echoes former Nixon aide Pat Buchanan, who ran on a platform of taking back the culture from immigrants and minorities. Block by block, my friends, we must take back our cities and take back our culture and take back our country. Is that a coded racial appeal? Donald Trump argued yes, at least when his political ambition required competing with Buchanan. You know, back in 2000, one of the many times that Trump flirted with running for president, they were up against each other for a nomination on the Reform Party ticket, and Trump blasted Buchanan as a bigot. He's a Hitler lover. I guess he's an anti-Semite. He doesn't like the blacks. He doesn't like the gays. I, 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 it's just incredible that anybody could embrace this guy. His views are so far off, and what he wrote in his book is so bad. Anti-Semitic, anti-black, anti-gay. Those are some of the very terms Trump's critics now use against him. And within a decade of saying that, it was Trump who invoked racist birtherism to attack the first black president and then found a lot of fuel in stealing Buchanan's lines rather than calling him anti-black anymore. So before we begin, take a look at the receipts. Hundreds and thousands every single night walk across that border into the United States of America, ignoring our laws, ignoring our border. Illegal immigrants pouring into our country, bringing with them crime, tremendous amounts of crime. Today we call for a new patriotism, where Americans begin to put the needs of Americans first. We are finally putting America first. For tonight's discussion, we're joined by conservative activist Candace Owens. She's with Turning Point USA, and she argues African Americans are doing better under the Trump presidency. She's drawn praise for the way she thinks from none other than Kanye West, who has praised Trump, while the president also hailed her impact and contribution to this dialogue. On the other side, we have Georgetown professor Michael Eric Dyson, a nationally recognized expert on civil rights, who argues Trump is emboldening white supremacists. He's the author of 21 books, including what truth sounds like. Uh, thank you both for doing this discussion. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Mm. Uh, Candace, when you look at that rhetoric and you look at what appears to be a shift in the way Donald Trump talks, do you think he is embracing a type of racial division that is problematic for us to operate as a civil society? Well, the first thing that I look at is the date of the tapes. It's remarkable that we are pulling tapes and you've gone into the archives and we are looking at the year 2000. I think people are entitled to evolve their thoughts over 18 years. Um, the second thing that I think is quite remarkable here is that we're talking about racial division and what sows racial division. I think the fact that every time I'm invited onto this network, I'm being asked to dispute another black person. The black community is broken up um, in general and I'm, I don't want to partake in any of that. We're uh, just a weekend where 71 black people were shot in Chicago, 13 of them killed, and we're not talking about that. Instead, Wait, we're talking well, about old We're going to talk about all of it. Um, you have Donald a problem. Trump. No, we're not. I have a problem but that we're doing wall-to-wall -wall coverage on two tapes that are You have a problem with, with who you're appearing on this? No, I don't have a problem Candace, you have a problem with who you're appearing on this segment with? No, I'm actually respectfully with? saying to him that we should both decline tearing apart the black community for the sake of television. And because MSNBC always invites me on to do that, I am declining to do so when our community is mourning the 71 people that were shot over the weekend. We need to stop this warfare and come together and talk about things that matter. And what is going on in Chicago is a bigger topic and should be a bigger topic on this network than what Trump said 18 years ago, and whether or not it means that people change over 18 years, which, shocker guys, they do. Well, I'm going to have the professor respond, but I have to respond on behalf of myself. You knew what you were invited to discuss, and we're happy you're here. It's very important to me in this show that we have these conversations and invite a lot of people of all perspectives. If there's a problem with that, I think you knew what the invite was to, to begin with. Professor Dyson, your thoughts. 
Well, look, we're dealing with a person who has not only radically emboldened the prospects of bigotry in this country, the resurgent, recrudescent hate that he has articulated. If you can't beat him, coin him. So he opposes Pat Buchanan on the one hand when it's to his own political advantage, and then subsequently when the real beliefs uh, emerge from Mr. Trump, we see that his vicious animus toward black people, gay people, Mexicans, Muslims, women, and the like is a kind of cornucopia of hate that has been brashly articulated by a man of manifest lack of serious coherence, chaotic intelligence, and the lack of an ability to really express himself by not only pulling upon the strands of history, but refusing to take into consideration what's going on today. So I think in one sense, if we're going to talk about what, if we're going to be honest about Donald Trump, he has not helped uh, black people. He has not enabled African-American people to move forward. He's riding an, a crest and a wave of economic prosperity put in place by his predecessor, Barack Obama. He has refused to acknowledge the centrality of police brutality and unarmed black people being assaulted by people in this country. So the reality is, is that Donald Trump, while claiming through rhetoric to be for the blacks, what he has done is undermine the capacity of African-American people to exist in a country where it's not only about the economic facts and the wherewithal that we uh, com contend with, it is about the tone. It is about the rhetoric. It is about the atmosphere that has been unleashed here. And Donald Trump has done something very dangerous and destructive. He can't see the difference between an anti-fascist and a person who supports it. He can't see the difference between somebody who's against black people and who is for them. So when he draws false equivalencies between both sides, he negates the ability to say, look, I believe in rational civil discourse in America, but I take a side morally and politically. We are now 53 if I, if years I to the date. For a quick second, 53 uh, years, let me finish this. 53 years beyond the date well, of the voting. Time, let me finish Candace, this. We'll, yeah. go to, we'll go to this the professor and then we'll go back to you, Candace. This, this 50, professor 53, Dyson, you can finish and then we'll go right. back to Candace. Here we are 53 years past the Voting Rights Act. We've seen the resurgence of an attempt to nullify and destroy that black vote. We've seen attempts to somehow uh, circum, you know, circumnavigate around uh, black political citizenry and agency. So all I'm saying is, if we're concerned about black people, we've got to be concerned about poverty, inequality, lack of access to education, plus the kinds of s sorts of violence that we see directed toward black right. people in this Great country. Great the go conversation. Ahead. Sorts of violence as being directed towards black people. Am I black? I'm curious if I'm black, because I'm a black conservative. And I am not hearing anything that is said about the fact that about 25 white Democrats assembled to kick me out of a restaurant yesterday to throw water and to throw eggs at me because I am a conservative that supports Donald Trump. The very Bless same you. Donald Trump, okay? The very same Donald Trump that has not Obama. Obama did not do this it's because President Trump has been slashing regulations and it has brought this economy to a place it has never been at, okay? We have unemployment that's an all time low for both women. You brought up women, you brought up gays, you brought up black people. Unemployment Mexicans. is at an all all time mm -hmm. low across the board. You guys to refuse to acknowledge the truth that we are doing better. You want to talk about fascists? Antifa attacked me. This is an all white gang that attacked me and attacked an all black police force in Philadelphia, okay? And they claim to be fighting racism. How is it plausible, Professor, that you allow this to happen to your community because you've decided that because we are ideologically conservatives, you are okay with this. You're okay with the resources First of, of all, the Democrats. I haven't said a word. I, don't, don't cut me off. I haven't you said did. a word. You just said a lot of words. A I lot didn't of, say a actually, word. If we, uh, no, no, no. Was I, I said nothing about count, you. Now you're cutting me off, I said nothing okay? about you. No, 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 no. I, so I find what I happened to you reprehensible, by the way. I still have to keep it going. Candace, Candace, we're going to take a pause. No, no, no. I didn't get to finish. He just went on for five minutes straight. You are attacking your argument you that you just finish, made. I'm going to let you finish, but if you're calling out a professor, I have to give him time. Truth, so, Candace, go ahead. Liberals have been attacking conservatives, and you guys say nothing about it. Blacks were attacked yesterday, okay? And they were attacked because they support Donald Trump. Black support for Donald Trump has doubled since this time last year. You guys can try to pretend that he is pushing in a racist era in this country when, in fact, we know the Democrats are the racists, have always been the racists. The party's never switched, and you should know this. As a civil rights person, you know the history. You know the people so Candace, under the hood of the KKK. Let me, let me respond. Candace, Democrats, I'm going to give... And the party never switched. And Candace, shame, I'm going to give the you professor should defend a chance what to happened respond. to me yesterday and defend it, our community being attacked because we support Donald Trump, because we understand that we have better okay. economic opportunities under him than we ever had in Obama. Let me, and let me shame on you for spreading in Obama. Candace, I'm going to give the, the professor a chance to respond. Under his administration, he allowed 
allowed the bloodshed. And Trump wanted to send this. the National Guard, and the Democrats stopped him. I'm really so done with this. I'm done with this racist narrative. I don't, don't want to have to talk over Let's people, talk but we have facts. to go Mr. back and forth. Let's talk about and, the facts. And yes. Candace, we're going to have to take a pause there. Couple things. You're you're making a personal attack. On the other guests, so what I have to I give them a chance to respond. Let me let me respond. First and of all, I, I also have to said, say, and Professor, I'm going to go back to you. I also have to say mm. the topic of this discussion that we have tried and, and perhaps are, are failing on live television to discuss right. is Trump policy. The incident that you're referring to <clears> yesterday <throat> is, is not necessarily this topic. It's a Democrat uh, policy. And so we have to Waters, gather see them more in information. Go up to them. It's, so it's I'm a Democrat guess he's being policy. Rude. Professor, yeah, you get me, a chance me, to respond, this. sir. First of all, I never said anything about Ms. Owens. I never directed any animus, any particular rhetoric, any any conversation toward her. So first of all, when she say you allowed it, first of all, I'm not God. I don't control the universe or weather. I don't control the atmosphere, geology, or geography. So I did not point these people toward you. I think it's reprehensible that any human being is, uh, uh, if you will, put out of a particular establishment because of her ideology. I think that that's problematic. So I did not suggest that. Number two, uh, yeah, you are black and I am black. But that doesn't mean that automatically we agree with everything. You'll of course not. We should Let me finish. One another. Now, now, what I'm saying to you is that when you talk about me as disrespectful, uh, the, the, here's here's what's interesting to me. Uh, you have come on here and, like Donald Trump, reduce everything to narcissistic self preoccupation and articulation you're using big of words your. Here Let me finish. What you're saying I mean, here. Saying right so now, now what I happens to Black America happens to you. So Black people are reduced to what? Can you, Ari? Can I finish my point? I didn't jump on her. Can I finish my point? Big Can, I finish, my point? Can I finish my point? We're out of time. We had we put aside eight minutes. Narcissism, whether black or white, is problematic. Here's Michael Eric Dyson. Of arguing, I thank you both. Therefore, she articulates we will be right back. People. Bless your heart, you. little girl. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here. Or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.